how much weight should you expect to gain if you have Hashimoto's thyroiditis? The short answer is that on average, patients with this condition can expect to gain between 5 and 15 pounds. The longer answer is that you can gain as much as 50 pounds depending on certain risk factors. Don't let this bring you down though because it is definitely possible to maintain a normal weight even if you have Hashimoto's. Whether or not you gain weight and how much depends on these factors. The first is your diet. Hands down, the most important factor for determining how much weight you will gain if you have Hashimoto's is the food that you put into your mouth. This not only includes the amount of food that you put into your mouth, but also the quality of that food. If you're somebody who thinks that after your diagnosis of Hashimoto's, you can waltz around eating the standard American diet without gaining any weight, think again. As someone with Hashimoto's, you are just going to be more sensitive to the choices that you make as it relates to your diet. If you're somebody who wants to gain a lot of weight, then do these things. Eat a lot of ultra-processed foods. Eat plenty of refined sugars and refined carbohydrates. Drink a ton of sugar-sweetened beverages. Drink alcohol every day. Restrict your calories when you try to lose weight. Make sure you don't eat enough protein. Avoid all carbohydrates, including fruit and make sure you overeat with every meal. Doing this will all but guarantee that your weight skyrockets if you have Hashimoto's. But if you're somebody who wants to lose weight or maintain your weight, then try these things. Eat only real whole foods. This should comprise at least 80 to 90% of your diet. Eat 100 grams of protein every day. Eat at least 100 grams of whole food carbohydrates every day. Eat plenty of fruits and vegetables. Eat natural fermented foods. Eat fish at least twice per week. Don't overeat, but make sure that you aren't hungry throughout the day. Eating the right foods and having the right habits will prevent that weight gain that I mentioned in the very beginning of this video. If you're someone who is not paying attention to the foods that you eat or consciously trying to eat healthy, then you can expect to gain much more than that 5 to 15 pounds that I mentioned. Yes, it will take some hard work and some discipline to get your diet under control, but it will be worth it. Some people have even been able to put their Hashimoto's into remission just by changing their diet. The second factor has to do with the severity of your disease. The worse your disease state is, the more weight you will gain. It's that simple. This is because your thyroid regulates your metabolism. But how do you know just how bad your version of Hashimoto's is? This one is tricky, but there are some things that you can do to help make an educated guess. One includes your lab test tests at diagnosis. We know from many studies into hypothyroidism that those people who have a higher TSH at the time of their diagnosis have a worse prognosis. Because the TSH is a reflection of thyroid gland function, the higher your TSH is, the more likely it is that you have more thyroid gland damage. This same idea also applies to thyroid antibody levels at the time of diagnosis. Higher levels of thyroid antibodies are associated with higher thyroid gland inflammation and therefore more thyroid gland damage. This is one of the major reasons why I'm such a big advocate for getting your thyroid antibodies under control if you have a diagnosis of Hashimoto's. And it's also why patients who have seronegative Hashimoto's have a much easier time losing weight. These are patients who have Hashimoto's but have negative thyroid antibodies. Another factor has to do with how much thyroid medication you require. If you're someone who needs higher than average doses of thyroid medication to get your thyroid symptoms under control, then you can infer that you are somebody who has more thyroid gland damage. The average dose of level thyroxine in patients who have Hashimoto's is around 100 micrograms per day. If you take less than this, then that's a good sign. If you take more than this, then that's probably an indication that you have a worse disease state. The good news about disease severity is that it's something that can be completely managed. Meaning even if you're somebody who has a rip-roaring case of Hashimoto's, doesn't guarantee that you're going to gain weight endlessly. But this assumes that you're on the right treatment, which is exactly what we're going to be talking about next. Number three is your treatment. In other words, what type of thyroid medication are you taking? The whole reason you're taking thyroid medication, if you have a diagnosis of Hashimoto's, is to replace the lost thyroid hormone that your thyroid gland is unable to produce. In theory, this sounds really easy. All you need to do is take thyroid medication, check your TSH, and then make sure those two things are optimized. If they are, you won't gain any weight and you won't have any other thyroid symptoms. But in the real world, it's a lot more complicated than this. The reason is that your body uses more than just one thyroid hormone. But when doctors prescribe thyroid medication to you, they're only giving you one thyroid hormone and they're giving you the weakest form. To complicate matters further, there's even some evidence to suggest that thyroid medication itself can lead to weight gain. 
Levothyroxin is one of those, but all of them have the potential to do so. If managing your weight is your goal and you have Hashimoto's, then you'll want to take a combination of thyroid hormones, including T4, T3, and the newer one, T2. Studies have shown that thyroid patients who switch from T4 to T3, even while maintaining the same TSH level after the switch, see more weight loss and better symptom control. This highlights just how powerful T3 thyroid hormone is at regulating metabolism. And by the way, similar findings have been found with T2 thyroid hormone as well. In a perfect world, instead of just taking level thyroxine, you'd use a combination of T4, T3, and T2. For managing your weight, it might look something like this. Around 100 micrograms of T4 as level thyroxine or tyrosine, around 10 to 20 micrograms of T3 usually as lyothyronine or cytomel, and around 100 to 200 micrograms of T2 as 3,5-diiodo-L-thyronine. Level thyroxine can sometimes help with weight loss if just taken by itself, but if you're someone who can't seem to lose weight, or if you're someone who is continually gaining weight, then you may want to try a combination of multiple thyroid hormones. Number four has to do with your genetics. Your genetics will always play a role in your ability to gain or lose weight if you have Hashimoto's, and not just because of their impact on your risk of having an autoimmune disease. What I'm really referring to here is your body's innate ability to build muscle mass and burn fat mass. We know that some body types are just more prone to gaining weight compared to others. And those people who are more prone to gaining weight, we call endomorphs. People with this body type tend to just have a bigger appetite, they have different hormone patterns, their enzymes function a little differently and at different rates than you and I, and they even have different movement patterns throughout the day, which all contribute to an easier time gaining weight. If you win the genetic lottery and you happen to be somebody who has Hashimoto's but also has an endomorphic somatotype, then you're somebody who's going to have a really easy time gaining weight and a really hard time losing weight. Having this somatotype doesn't doom you to weight gain forever though. It just means you're gonna have to be more vigilant about your diet and your activity level. It's hard to put an exact number on your genetics, but getting dealt a bad hand genetically speaking is enough to increase that weight gain from five to 15 all the way up to 30 pounds if you have a diagnosis of Hashimoto's. The silver lining is that endomorphs also happen to gain muscle more easily compared to other somatotypes. This means they have extra power in the form of a higher metabolism. You just have to figure out how to deal with that extra fat that comes along with that extra muscle building capacity. The fifth factor has to do with how much water you retain. It often surprises patients with Hashimoto's to learn that much of the weight that they gain isn't due to fat mass, but instead to water mass. And in some cases, this fluid retention can account for as much as five to 10 pounds of extra weight. And sometimes it even goes unnoticed by hiding in tissues you may not be looking at like your legs, but other times it's more obvious because it's found in tissues like your face and around your eyes. It can sometimes be hard to differentiate between fat and water, but you can often find the difference by looking at your weight as measured on a scale. The scale is a pretty terrible way to assess your weight as a thyroid patient, but it does come in handy here. If you check your weight every single day on a scale and you see daily fluctuations by multiple pounds, that's a flashing indicator that your problem is related to fluid retention. If instead you see a gradual increase in your weight, week after week, that's a sign it's probably related to fat. The good news is that it's much easier to get rid of extra water than it is extra fat. And you can almost always see an immediate drop in that extra fluid if and when you get on the right type and dose of thyroid medication. Number six is your physical activity level and how often you exercise. It should come as no surprise that thyroid patients who are more active will gain less weight than those who are not. And this benefit isn't necessarily just because of the extra caloric burn, although that is a benefit as well. Most of the benefit that you get from exercise exercise has to do with how it impacts your thyroid and other hormones in your body like insulin. Combining a sedentary lifestyle with a diagnosis of hypothyroidism is a recipe for a lot of weight gain. But when you exercise, you not only improve your metabolism by increasing thyroid function, you also help your body become more sensitive to the hormone insulin. And this means you will be better able and capable of using fat as an energy source. Fatigue is a major reason why so many thyroid patients are unable to exercise or to stay active. But the thing that most thyroid patients fail to appreciate is that exercise can actually paradoxically 
increase your energy. So it's less about killing yourself with hours and hours of extra cardio and more about just being active and pushing your body to whatever extent it's capable of. When you put all this together, here's where you end up. The average patient with Hashimoto's will gain about five to 15 pounds after their diagnosis and an extra two to five pounds per year if they do nothing. And roughly about half of this weight will likely be related to constipation and fluid retention. But if you change your lifestyle, exercise more regularly, eat more whole foods, and optimize your thyroid, you can maintain a lean and healthy body, even with a diagnosis of Hashimoto's. And this really should be the goal of every single patient with this condition. If you're interested in losing weight, then the first place to start is with your diet. And if you want to see the best diets for Hashimoto's, then I'd recommend checking out this video next.